Hey, everybody, welcome to the Shut Up and Do It podcast, the place where we bring you all things real estate and business oriented. I'm your host, Nick Allerud of the AA Real Estate Group and CompleteDealFlowSystem.com. Coming at you live from Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, we're super stoked to this time. We have a guest, uh, another guest from our mastermind group. This is Caleb Pearson of the Caleb Pearson team. Tell you a little bit about him. He has a uh, he is the number one Remax team in South Carolina in a uh, city that's near and dear to my heart. Been there once in Char- Charleston. I say that right, Charleston. <laughs> yeah, that's that's close. Out Charleston, North Carolina, and um, he's he's got a retail brokerage team. He's uh, running about 200 transactions a year with his team. Uh, he is a fix and flipper. He's doing about 75 to 100 deals a year uh, on the fix and flip side. He started amassing a multifamily portfolio, and he's here today to share something really cool, which is an app that he created, which I'll let him get into later on in the show. But Caleb, thank you so much for being on with me, man. No, Nick, thank you for having me on. Yeah, we're super stoked, and uh, neither of our accents are, you know, hurting the other one, right? You can understand me with my R's, I can understand you, so we're good? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I think we're good. <laughs> nice, man. Hey, Caleb, why don't we start, um, tell us a little bit about you, how you got to where you are today. Yeah, so um, I grew up Virginia Beach area, I moved to Charleston right after college, didn't have a job lined up when I um, moved down here. Actually, I'd never been to Charleston before until um, spring break, my senior year in college. Came down here for, I don't know, three, four days and just fell in love with it. So I called my mom and told her I was gonna move down to Charleston and she, I didn't have any money. I might've had, call it $1,200 to my name. And she said, all right, well, when your money runs out, you're coming home. Um, So I moved here, worked worked in food and bev for, I would call it, I don't know, two or three months and got into real estate and just kind of figured it out. <laughs> two or three months. It must have been a, a titillating career in food and beverage that you had. Uh, it, it was long enough. It, I've, <laughs> I've tried to get the house under contract as fast as I possibly could to get out of the food and bath business. As soon as I got my first half million dollar house under contract, I was out of there. <laughs> good for you, man. That's awesome. That's cool. And you're still loving it. You never look back, right? Oh, yeah, I love real estate. That's so cool. Tell us about how you kind of, so you started with, you know, that one deal, I'm assuming maybe a solopreneur, right, as a one, one-man one shop. Tell us kind of yeah. your progression and how you got, you know, to build the team and where you're at now, today. Yeah, so I was really fortunate. I had a lady that had been in the business for like 25 years um, and her boyfriend or better half. And then I had my partner now that I own the Remax franchise with, they were all working together. They kind of took me under their wing and taught me the right way to do things on the retail side. Um, I was with them for about a year. I think my first year I did about 40, 35, 40 transactions on my own. And then I split off and started my own team, hired a coach mentor um, who had already built a business uh, or a team that had gotten up to like four or 500 transactions. So he had already gone through all the hurdles that I was about to go through. So he helped me get that side of the business going and ramped up. And then we, Got into flipping some homes and then turned that into a business. And now we're getting into the multifamily and turning that into another business. That's awesome. And see, it's funny because you have an interesting approach to the fix and flip world. Most of the people that I'm, we're accustomed to, right? They start in fix and flipping and then they end up kind of opening a brokerage as another source, another place to push those leads. But you started from the other side, the retail, got into fix and flipping and was that a seamless transition or did you have any sort of hiccups as you kind of made your way into that world? So we were just doing such high volume on the retail side that I knew the market really, really well. And so did everybody on my staff. So I think that gave us a competitive advantage to a lot of the fix and flippers in the market. They don't know pricing as well. They don't know how quickly things will move. Um, obviously I had the learning curve of learning the construction piece. Um, I would say the toughest challenge was figuring out the money piece on how to fund the the houses um, off the start. But once I figured that piece out, it's, it's, I wouldn't call it easy because every business has a challenge, but I do think it's easier than the retail side. Do you really? Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I really do. Let's, I want to dive into that. Tell, tell me why this is good. Um, the margins are better. Um, you don't, you're more, the people are easier to work with. I think the sellers are, 
in the fix and flip side than the retail side. The, on the retail side, the sellers are a lot more demanding and they want to do it their way and they all want more for the house than it's usually worth. And then on the fix and flip side, you've got people that are kind of in a, I don't want to say a desperate situation, but some of them are. So they need you to carry them to the finish line and they'll do anything that you need, that you ask them to, um, which makes your job a hell of a lot easier. And then I like when, once I own the house, it's my house, it's my decisions. I can tell my staff what to do with each property and they, they run, they run with it. That's awesome, man. That's, that's real cool. And you've never, it's funny cause a lot of people who jump into that world end up learning some hard lessons, but you, uh, it seems like you had your staff figured out your contractor world figured out and did you run into any issues there at all? I mean, we're, we still run into issues every day. I mean, we, we did a deal last month where we lost 66 grand. So that, that hurt. Um, but we only lost money on two deals in all of 2019. So yeah. knock on wood, that, that turned out okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, the challenges, the construction challenges, money challenges, cash flow challenges, um, they're all challenges that I had to learn and overcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure, cash flow to this day too. When as you start getting bigger and doing more transactions, right? Even even this day, it's uh, we're, we're people process and, and capital, right? People process yeah. and capital all day long. What can we do to help expand and grow? But it's like I'm with you, man. I'm with you on that. That's cool. Yeah, so, I'll tell you. With the capital side, it was you've got this one business of the retail brokers team that does so well. But when I was taking that money and funding these deals. I look up and I'm like, there's no money left in this checking account. And I mean, we've got a certain nut that we have to cover every single month on this side. So it, it got to where it was a juggling act and I've kind of figured out it, it, how much cash to keep on hand at all times just for a rainy day. Nice. Nice. Very, very cool. Um, so you, you know, progress into fix and flipping and, um, you know, tell us about, you still had your retail team at the same time. So you got, you manage, you, you kind of, evenly worked both sides for a while for a few years no i actually worked i'd say 95 percent of my time on the retail side and then about five percent of my time on the um fix and flip side which was a blessing in disguise for me because i had to build a business over here on the um, fix and flip side that worked that ran and worked without my efforts um because i didn't have the time to put into it so it's it's been really cool to watch this grow and I'm more of a consultant to the whole team. Um, and I've obviously got my own mentors, but if that information passes through me and then I pass it through to the team. That's awesome. Very, very cool. So as you, as you were growing in your retail and your fix and flip side, um, you started to realize, well, heck it's, I mean, you sort of told me the story before we started recording today, but uh, you got to a point where you realized, Hey, if I had a tool, uh, this could be a lot easier. So tell us your, your transition into uh, what you got going on. Yeah, so this, this was actually pretty cool how this thing came to be. Um, I've been on so many listing appointments in my career, probably, if I had to guess, probably close to 1,000 listing appointments, meaning sitting in front of 1,000 sellers. Um, and I've just noticed going on 20 to 30 a month, every time I'd go sit down with that many people every month, there was always two or three that were really motivated. And I thought about it. I'm like, well, two or three of my own sellers are that motivated. How many other sellers are that motivated in the market that you don't know their true motivation? All you know is that there's an asking price for 4,000, 5,000 homes in our Charleston MLS. So I wanted to figure out, I said, okay, well, how can I get an offer um, in front of all four to 5,000 of them without hiring a virtual assistant to write up offers for all of them or hiring a staff member to sit down and type up a couple hundred offers every week. I mean, you know, that's a, that would be a full-time job. So I said, how do we, how do I do it? Now I was actually out of the bar one night with a friend that's got some tech savvy other friends and he said, well, I, I can build that or I can get that built. So over a hundred thousand dollars later and a bunch of time and energy invested, we had an app um, that was a little buggy and, but it worked okay. Um, and then we used the app in our business. And first time we sent out a batch of offers, we made almost 60K on the first batch of offers that we sent out. So I'm thinking, all right, well, damn, this thing's got some legs. And then we've used it in our business now for 
we used it about a year before I had another friend that I told it about. And he said, well, can you tie that into my MLS and build it out for me? And then it was another friend and it got, it, and then it turned into a business. Wow. That's every, another case study of why everything good comes out of a bar right there. Everything. <laughs> all the best conversations and all the best information that I learned at these conferences and seminars come from the bar or dinner. Agreed. Agreed. hundred percent. That's awesome. Very cool. So how, you submitted uh, for your first deal, like you did on that one. What, how many did you submit at once? Do you remember to get that $60,000 deal? So I've actually, my cousin works for me and he sends all the offers out. Um, and he's fearless. So I think he sent out like a thousand offers in one batch, which I don't advise you doing because it generates too many responses too fast. Um, and he just siphoned through them and picked off a really, really good deal. It was a family where it was like five or six siblings that had had the house listed for a hundred and call it six months, 180 days or so. And they were just ready to get rid of it. And we were the first offer they'd seen and they took it. And I mean, it was a, it was a really good deal. Yeah. Very, oh, that's very cool. So you, you have now your team uh, is able to build that out towards any local MLS. Is that accurate? Yeah. So our developer can wrap it in and, or tie it into all just about, we've had one or two MLSs around the country that we've had some trouble with, but pr pretty much anywhere in the country, we can tie it into your MLS and um, build it out for you. That's crazy. It's a, and, and how do you deal with I, this question I asked you earlier? So up here, especially in the, uh, very kind and caring and genuine Boston market where no one here is rude at all. Um, how do you end up dealing with, do you get some agents that maybe are not as happy when they start getting offers emailed to them? I mean, yeah, it's just like direct mail. I mean, how do you handle when and someone calls in and cusses you out and screams at you over a, a postcard that you sent? Exactly. I, we put it, we have a contest to see who gets the the best uh, insults and we put them on our Facebook group. <laughs> oh, no, that's amazing. Uh, same thing. We just let it brush right off our shoulders. And you can actually, there's a feature that we added in the app that you can exclude certain agents if you want to. Like, if you get that one or two agents that just raises hell or is super difficult that you don't want to deal with, you can exclude their listings. That's cool. It's perfect. It sounds like you've kind of hit on everything. Is, is, um, if you do get, it's just basically people raising their hands, right? So you're submitting this offer, goes out to a bunch of people, and the agents are either going to raise their hand or the sellers are going to raise their hand and say, you know, at this point, yeah, I am looking to work with anybody who's who's interested, right? And then you yeah. work on the real numbers at that point from that side. Is that accurate? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the, the app is um, it's super user-friendly. It's really easy to use. The way we use it is Justin goes in and he makes, call it 100 offers. Um, those sellers have already raised their hand because it's on the active MLS. I mean, they, they want to sell. You just don't know what their motivation is. So he's usually offering on homes that have been on the market for 90 days or longer, meaning that the sellers are starting to get a little bit, a little bit upset with the agent or a little bit depressed about the process. They get a little bit more motivated. They haven't seen any offers. Um, and then Justin's job is to field the counter offers all day. And anything that comes in at call it, 80% below market value or 80% off of ask price, then he'll negotiate back and forth and try to make the deal work. That sounds awesome. That, yeah, we pick up two to three deals a month from the MLS in a low inventory market. If this was 2011, 2012, I think the app would work even better. We were, we were, that's the last time we were picking stuff up MLS, right? The 2011, yeah. 2012. Yeah. A lot of people have run away from the MLS and, or run away from kind of like people are running away from the courthouse sales because it's gotten so competitive and inventory has gotten so low. Um, but like I said, we're still picking up a few deals a month from it. Are you offering any um, sign up incentives or anything or just to just the website and go check yeah, it out? So the, the best way to get signed up is go to zoomoffersnow.com and there's a form that you fill out. We'll send you a demo video of exactly how it works. Um, and then it's got some frequently asked questions that most people have before getting signed up. And then you, we send you the initial invoice, you pay it, we get you tied into the MLS and you're usually up and running in about 10 days. That's awesome, man. That's very, very cool. So, and for people to kind of link in with you specifically, right? Do you, how do you want, how can people kind of reach out to you? Um, they can email me. 
Anybody can email me at calebcpteam at gmail.com. It's C-A-L-E-B-C-P-T-E-A-M at gmail.com. And do you have any uh, aspirations of taking your fix and flip business or your retail business nationally across every major market in the United States? You know, I did five years ago. Um, and now I've gotten to where I value, I think, quality time with the family even more. And I'm just not as ambitious to take over the world as I am to just have good quality time and have a good, good quality of life. I knew exactly how you're going to answer that, which is why I asked that question. A lot of our listeners are still in that ambition mode where they're just on the hunt and on the grind all day long, but it's funny how you get to a certain level and I a hundred percent respect that. So, um, and I see all you, you know, you obviously got your branded behind you. Remax Alliance, Caleb Pearson team, uh, real estate, and uh, what's in a project that you're super excited about besides obviously Zoom offers now, but it, what are you excited about in the next uh, upcoming month or two? Um, I'm actually, I'm taking down a 42 unit portfolio um, that I, that our home buyer side found. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I've never bought more than two homes from any particular seller. So that's, that's fairly exciting for us. Yeah. Hey, are you, are you holding on to those? Or are you going to do flipping them off one by one? I'm going to sell off. There's a good bit of it in there is a, like four plexes, seven plexes. Uh, I think the biggest one is a nine. So what I'm planning to do is sell off all the single family and then pay down or pay off some of the multifamily and hopefully have some stuff free and clear. Awesome. There it is, Caleb. Welcome to that, to that new game of multifamily, man. We, we welcome you with warm arms. Well, thank you. <laughs> Um, ladies and gentlemen, this was Caleb Pearson. Uh, b- please go check out zoomoffersnow.com to get access. If you are, I'm assuming you have to be a licensed agent, Caleb, right? Is that accurate? You either have to be licensed or have somebody on your team that's licensed or partner with an agent is what a lot of guys around the country are doing. Mm-hmm. There you go. So yeah, get with an agent if you don't already have one and check out zoomoffersnow.com where you'll see Caleb's awesome app that is sending out offers across the nation as we speak. So very, very cool. Is there any uh, departing words you've got for us, Caleb? Any good advice to any uh, investors starting out in the world? Um, I would say to focus. I know that sounds funny coming from me who owns multiple businesses and it seems like I'm all over the place. Um, but I've done them one at a time. And bi- so I've gotten one, built it up, then decided to take on another one, build it up to where each one runs almost on its own. Um, I see too many people in the fix and flip industry get into t- go too many different routes with it, whether it's they try to do sell or finance deals, they're trying to do subject to, they're getting into mobile homes, they're doing – um, wholesales, fix and flips, multifamily. People just go in too many directions. I, I highly, highly, highly encourage, especially the new guys, to focus on one thing and do it well. 100% agree. And once you focus on that one path, remember, everybody, this is just a shameless plug to shut up and do it, right? Stop the thoughts in your head and just execute on it. Caleb, this has been awesome to have you on today, my man. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you guys for having me on. That's awesome. And folks, thank you so much for taking part in another episode of the Shut Up and Do It podcast, where we try to bring as much value as we can by having some top quality speakers like Caleb, who comes on our show. Uh, Be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. So uh, as always, thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.